Today I'm going to show you how to take that iPhone Pro cinematic mode footage and achieve cinematic colors using actual Hollywood movies as references. And then I'm going to show you how to take that color grade and create your own LUT with it to do whatever you want with. A lot of people talk about this idea of achieving cinematic colors, and while it can definitely be subjective, I think the movie industry can give us some guidelines as to what this actually looks like. These colors are usually nice and soft and creamy, but also rich and dynamic. Additionally, we find a lot of cinematic colors based in higher dynamic range cameras, typically shot on actual cinema cameras. And this is important to keep in mind because when you're thinking about cinematic colors, in most cases, you're highlights as well as your shadows are all exposed for correctly. And this is what makes that cinematic mode HDR footage so cinematic is because it's able to emulate those wider dynamic ranges, which in turn almost immediately gives you a more cinematic look. Keep in mind that this is all very subjective. The way someone color grades any footage is up to the person who's actually color grading it, the director and the cinematographer's vision for those colors. There's a million different ways you can color grade great any kind of footage but if you go too far in one direction or the other when it comes to actually color grading a lot of times you can find yourself completely missing the mark on what actual filmmakers are doing which is why i want to share with you today how to actually use hollywood movies as references to base your own color grading on and i'm going to be using three movies that are some of my favorites and i absolutely love the way these movies are color graded the movies are interstellar the revenant and the batman with uh, edward cullen or um, what's his name? What is his name? The Twilight Guy. Why can't I think of his name? You know who he is. The Batman cast. Robert Pattinson. Wow, that was a big fail. And I'm also gonna try and make this as easy as possible. It's like four or five steps to be able to do this and then to create your own LUT, it's another very easy step. But these steps can generally be applied to pretty much any footage that you have. So I've got to imagine that if you're watching this video, you're a videographer, cinematographer, YouTuber of some kind, and that means you need good quality music for your videos that's also license free. And if you didn't know, I actually founded a music licensing company called Mood Sound Design. All of the music in every single one of my YouTube videos is from Mood Sound Design, and we're just six bucks a month, and that gives you unlimited access to an ever-growing library of music that's 100% originally written for creators like yourself. And if you click the link in the description, go to moodsounddesign.com, you can actually start a free 14 day trial with us. And if you do that, you're going to get five of my Lightroom presets, as well as four of my Adobe Premiere LUTs all for free. So that would mean a lot to me if you checked us out. And I'm very confident that you'll find some incredible music and soundtracks for your next video project. So before you even get into your video editing software, what you're going to want to do is take a brief look at the footage that you're about to color grade, and then think about some of your favorite favorite movies that you want to find a reference for and try and find specific shots in those movies that are similar to the footage that you currently have. If it's like daytime lighting in the reference footage you're using and it's sunset or golden hour on your footage, well obviously that doesn't make any sense to try and match that color grade. And what I actually did is just pulled up the movie trailers to Interstellar and The Revenant and The Batman and just simply took screenshots at specific moments in those trailers that I knew I already had similar footage two that I was trying to color grade and color match. I would recommend doing that. And once you find some good reference screenshots or reference video, then you can go ahead and start color grading. I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro as my video editing software. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all of my footage that I'm gonna be using today, as well as my references. And I'm just gonna drag this into my project window. So I wanna start with this clip here and actually use a reference from the movie Interstellar. I'm just gonna drag this reference screenshot right onto my timeline. It can be any duration you want. I'm gonna go ahead and take my cursor, hover it over the reference here, and then click on this little wrench and go to comparison view. I'm actually gonna switch these here. On this side of the screen is where I want my reference to be. So wherever my cursor is, I'm just gonna punch in that time. So I'm simply matching the time of where the cursor is to this right here. And now if I take my cursor over here, I can see my footage on the left and the interstellar screenshot on the right. The other thing that I wanna do is actually zoom this clip in a little bit so we don't have those black bars on the top and the bottom, only because those black bars can be a little bit distracting when you're trying to color match. So there we go. Now we're ready to start color grading. 
the first thing I'm gonna do is click on this clip, go to Lumetri Color, and I'm actually going to apply my HDR conversion LUT to this footage. And the reason why I'm doing this is Premiere specifically has an issue with rendering iPhone HDR colors exactly how they look on your phone. So I created this LUT. Click the link in the description if you actually wanna see a full explanation on why I'm using this LUT. This is where I simply will apply that conversion LUT. It's a one-step process here, and you can actually see exactly what it's doing if I check this box. And now I can color grade this footage with more accuracy to how I filmed it. So this first step is simply going to be matching the exposure and basic highlights and shadows to your reference. So it's very easy. You'll only really need to be messing with white balance and some of these basic settings here. And I'm simply just gonna use my eyes, use the reference and match the exposure and the white balance. It looks like the highlights on the Interstellar reference is a little bit brighter, so we're gonna bump those up a little bit. I think the shadows are pretty good. Overall brightness, maybe up just a little bit. It feels like the iPhone footage is a little bit warmer, so I'm gonna cool it down just a little bit there. So that took me like literally less than a minute just to match up those basic settings, and that's really step one in this process. Now step two is gonna be dialing in the colors. So let's go down to curves here. And what we're gonna be doing is seeing what colors need to be muted, what colors need to be enhanced a bit more or changed or tweaked a little bit. And again, we're just going off the reference. So if we take a look here at this interstellar reference, we can see the blues are a little bit more muted, a bit more washed out, as well as these greens here are much more green and a lot less orangey yellow. I'm gonna go through here and simply make these types of tweaks, starting with hue versus saturation. I'm gonna dull down these blues just a little bit, as well as some of these yellows and greens. I'm also gonna go to hue versus hue. I'm gonna make these blues here just a little bit more aqua. And then I'm gonna go to these yellows here and make them a little bit more green. These yellows can use maybe a little bit more saturation here. Really keep those yellows nice and green. I'm actually gonna go down to the hue versus luma. I'm gonna deepen these yellows just a little bit here. Maybe take the saturation on these blues down a little little bit more, maybe like right there. Now step three is actually gonna be going back up to your basic settings and just double check where the exposure is at. And you're gonna find yourself going kind of back and forth between steps one and two, adjusting some of the colors, then coming back up here, adjusting some of the highlights, some of the shadows a bit. I think it looks very, very close. I might bring the highlights back down just a little bit from where they were at, maybe deepen the shadows a tiny bit. I think we're looking pretty good so far. Now here's where we want to get into tone curves. When we take a look at the tone curve, we have the one main tone curve line, but what I love to do is actually go in specifically to the red, greens, and blues. And in my opinion, this is where you can really get the most out of your color grade. So let's start with the reds here. And I usually like to start with the point right here in like the bottom third of it, and then here at the top third of it. If we take these reds down quite a bit, the shadows get a lot cooler in tone and the opposite is going to happen if I bring the reds up. I don't really think that much needs to be adjusted here. It looks like there's a little bit of warmth in some of these shadows, so I might give it a little bit of bump there. Same thing goes for the highlights, and I think we can actually keep that pretty much where it's at. Let me go to the greens here, add those same points. I think the shadows on the Interstellar reference have a definite tinge of that aqua green to it, so I'm going to go ahead and bump that up a little bit here. And then let's take a look at the blue curve here. Actually going to take a little bit of blue out of the shadows, see how it looks in the highlights. A lot of times what I like to do is move the control point in a dramatic way to see what it really does and how it impacts the image and just see what it needs more or less of. And I would say it's fine where it's already at. Now let's take a look at the main curve here and you can really see a lot of these blacks are a bit lifted here on the reference. I'm gonna just take this bottom point here and just lift it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna bring it back down here. We're gonna add another point here, maybe bring it back up a little bit to give it a bit more contrast there. Now that I've done this, I'm actually going to go back over to my hue and saturation. I'm going to drop down some of these oranges just a bit, some of the yellows, maybe deepen these shadows just a bit. Step four is really all about dialing in these curves and then going back and double checking the actual color adjustments that you made. All of these steps are very interconnected and it's totally okay that you're going back to previous steps and making these 
these adjustments and then going back to your current step and making adjustments. I like to call these steps, but they're really loose guidelines to color grading and matching up the reference to the current clip that you're trying to color match. I feel like the blues are missing a little bit of that aqua. So I'm actually going to go to these greens here and maybe try and pull those up a bit. But then it seems to make the shadows and the mids a little bit too green. So let me see if I can pull these down at a point here. Yep, I like that. Adjust some of these hues a bit more. Bring back the oranges a little bit. Deepen the yellows a bit more here. Go to this main curve. Make a little bit more adjustments. And then I'm actually going to go to this creative tab and just mess with the vibrance and saturation and I feel like I want to take this vibrance down just a little bit. The greens on this reference here are looking very much like a bluish green. I want to quick dial those in a bit more. These blues need a little bit more aqua, don't they? And I think that's as close as we're going to get to that. Let's drop these shadows down just a bit more. Go to creative here. I'm going to drop the saturation down just a touch. And I think we're looking very close to the reference we have here. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is actually take my reference and zoom it back out so we can see that like widescreen anamorphic black bars. And I'm going to add that same look to my current clip. Pull out my project window, add an adjustment layer, hit OK, drag the adjustment layer over the clip, drag it over the length of the clip, go to effects, type crop, drag that onto the adjustment layer. I'm just going to take the top and drag it down until it's about the same there, 13%. Bottom should be 13% as well. And then maybe I'll reposition this clip here just like that. That looks very close to cinematic colors on Interstellar. I've got those nice lush greens, the blue sky. I love it. Let's do a few more. I'm going to go and drag my next clip onto the timeline. And we're going to go and use this screenshot from the movie The Revenant. I got to zoom this in 200%. And then I'm going to hover my cursor over the reference. Type in the time that it's at 3309. There we go. Let's go ahead and zoom this clip in. HDR conversion LUT here. And really what I want to be able to achieve are these moody greens that you see. So let's go ahead and adjust basic settings first. Put the white balance at about like right there. Maybe give it a little bump in exposure, drop some of those highlights. The shadows don't need much. Let's take a look at the colors. Starting with the hue and saturation, there's a lot more yellows in this image. I'm gonna start with the hue versus hue, add a few control points here. We wanna make these yellows a lot more green. That's looking pretty good right there. Now it's still way more saturated than what I'm looking at on the Revenant reference here. So what I'm gonna do is go to hue versus saturation. We're just gonna desaturate these colors a little bit and it's just a nice little dance between the saturation and the hue until we get to a spot where it looks very close so let's go up to the creative tab here mess with some of the vibrance maybe just dull it out a little bit now let's jump back up to our basic corrections and i think we need to drop these shadows down just a little bit as well as highlights just a hair jump back over to curves oh yeah that's looking great. I want to go to Hue versus Luma and actually take these yellows and greens and just deepen them a little bit here. That's the magic we need. And this is really the essence of getting those nice moody greens going. Let's jump over to the tone curve. Take a look at our reds here. Give a little bit of warmth there in the shadows. Let's go to our greens. Yeah, just drop that down a little bit. Bring that point up a bit. Let's take a look at our blues. And we're going to just drop the blues down just a hair. And then our main curve here. We need to soften some of the blacks here on my clip just a bit. Bring this bottom point. Point up. Go back up to basic correction. Still feel like now it's a bit too bright. I want to add a little bit of vignette. This is something pretty common in that cinematic look as you get those vignetted corners. Typically when you're shooting at very shallow depths of field. Sometimes people like it. Sometimes people don't. I'm going to add a little vignette here. Back up to basic correction. Maybe lift the shadows a bit now. Down to saturation. Drop it eh, just a bit. I think I'm going to bump the luminance on these yellows and greens a little bit here. Zoom this reference screenshot out. Add the black bars. We got colors that look like The Revenant with my iPhone footage. Leonardo DiCaprio, I got you, bro. Let me know if you want to use this footage. <laughs> 
let's take a look at the Batman. Now I've got this clip here from my light and shadows film that I want to use. We're going to drag it on. You guys get what we're doing here. Zoom this in. I'm going to drag on my reference. Where's Edward? There he is. Hey buddy, gonna go ahead and put 543.22. Bam, just like that. Batman's just staring at the sky. Again, we're gonna wanna start with using my HDR conversion LUT. Bam, just like that. Let's start with some basic exposure settings here. Probably warm it up just a hair, bump the exposure a bit, barely drop the highlights, just bump the shadows a little bit. Just like that, step one is done. Step two, I'm gonna jump over to curves. Let's start with these yellowy oranges because you can see there's a lot more of that dull orange and I've got some very vibrant kind of gross looking yellows. Let's take these yellow and just warm them up. Look at that. They're still too saturated, so I'm gonna go ahead and just drop the saturation on that down to where those oranges are barely peeking through, already getting quite a bit closer. Another color that I'm gonna take a look at here is some of these kind of purplish, bluish hues. I'm gonna just leave it a little bit on the warmer side. Let's see what my blues are doing. Not a ton of blues here in this uh, Batman reference. We're gonna dull those out a bit. I like where it's headed so far. Take a look at our basic correction. Mess with these highlights a bit more in the shadows. It's pretty good there. Let's go down to our tone curve. Take a look at these reds here. And I think I wanna just drop this down a little bit. We really don't need much of that, maybe a little bit. Jump over to greens. There is a bit of green in these shadows. It's just lurking around. Maybe a little bit in the mids here. I think it's all right there. Take a look at the blues. It makes a big difference dropping this point a little bit to really warm it up. I like that. There we go. Now let's jump back over to white balance. I'm actually going to not have it be so warm. Maybe a little bit more blues in there. There is a bit of that purplish tint. Maybe we can get some of that going. Bump these shadows slightly. Now with the main curve here, bump the bottom of those shadows, then deepen it right above that, and then add an additional point here to maintain the highlights. The deeper I get into this, the more it's just back and forth tweaks that I'm making until I really get close to the results. There's a pretty heavy vignette on this, so we're gonna go ahead and add a little vignette there. Go back up to the main curve here maybe lift some of these shadows a bit just muting out some of these blues and greens a bit more i think i want to deepen these shadows just a hair more as well maybe drop down that exposure a bit a little warmer that's fantastic zoom out the reference image and add the black bars maybe center alley here look at that alley is in the batman movie i mean that looks pretty dang close Now that you understand how to really achieve these colors, here's how to create a LUT with that using Adobe Premiere Pro. So if we go up to the Lumetri Color tab here, before we create the LUT, you're actually gonna wanna turn off your HDR conversion LUT. So you just wanna hit none, and then click up on the three bars on the top right, go to export.cube, and I'm gonna name this Batman Concrete. Hit save, and just like that, you've got a LUT with this color grade. I'm gonna show you right now how that LUT works. So let's take another clip from my light and shadows here how about this one drag it onto the timeline find a spot in the clip here i like this part of the clip i'm going to re-add that hdr conversion let right there in the input let under basic correction and then we're going to go to the creative tab under lumetri color we're going to go to look and this is where we can add the lut we just created batman concrete there it is just like that it's got that batman warm gritty feel to it if you want to make adjustments from there you can i would say the shadows can come down a little bit but that looks pretty dang amazing now keep in mind you can also go to this lut in the creative tab and adjust the intensity of it so if you didn't like as much of it you can just drag this control point down on it and maybe use like 50 percent of it if we go back to this revenant clip that i color graded we can do the same exact thing so i'm going to click on the clip that i edited go to the lumetri color tab again you're going to want to turn off the hdr conversion let hit none then go up to the top right click those three bars export.cube and we can name this Revenant green mood sure and how about I just drag another clip on to my timeline go ahead and zoom it in add that HDR conversion let add the creative let go to creative look browse Revenant green mood and just like that we've got ourselves some cinematic colors maybe I want to drop the shadows a little bit warm it up a hair add those black bars like I can't make this any easier that's just fantastic 
I really hope that this video helps a lot of you out and maybe simplifies this process for a lot of you. And I definitely know you can go really deep down into the color grading world and get super crazy specific with it. And that's definitely an art in and of itself. Please also don't forget to check out Mood Sound Design if you need good music for your videos. And my newest iPhone Pro cinematic mode preset pack from my film Edge of the World is out now. Check the link in the description to purchase today. If you enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button and subscribe for lots more videos. I've got so much more content coming your way, fitness and videography related, iPhone related. I really do appreciate the ongoing support. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Peace. This, this type of image, wow, I already suck a lot. <clears throat> Today, I'm gonna show you how to take that iPhone. <clears throat> Today, I'm gonna show you how to take that iPhone Pro. Wow, I can't get that out. Today, I'm gonna show you how to, <clears throat> my gosh, I can't, I already can't talk. <clears throat> Movies that are, <clears throat> noise, bruv. <clears throat>